Okay. Hi guys. Um, I'm going to make this one short and sweet. This is about being chased and based. So <laughs> a little bit about my experience in orthodoxy and going from secular culture to one of a chaste life in orthodoxy. Um, so for those of you that do not know, once you become orthodox, it's very important or one of our commandments is to remain chaste until a spouse is presented. Um, and, and without a spouse, we're basically living a monastic life within secular culture, if that makes sense. So um, after baptism takes place, it's a huge change. There's no more hookup culture. There's no inappropriate uh, conversations with uh, men. Um, everything changes, all right? <laughs> you have one purpose and that's to get to know God and follow his commandments. And when it comes to dating, that's kind of off the table until someone presents themselves. So it's a big change. Uh, and I think when I became Orthodox, I didn't really, really understand what a huge change that really is and how different uh, you really become from all of your friends and family and secular culture once you've made that commitment, once you've made that vow. So, um, yeah, I just kind of wanted to talk about <laughs> what that has looked like for me. Um, the reaction I get when I talk to non-Orthodox people about it a lot of the time is disbelief, uh, especially with men. They don't actually believe me that I'm chaste. So, um, their experience, from my understanding, is that women are just loose in American culture. Modern women, right, are just loose. They're too easy. They have no virtues. And so I have learned that they literally don't believe that there are women that are actually practicing chastity and actually keeping that until they get married. Um, I've gotten shock, uh, just complete disbelief. They've never even seen or heard someone who actually has made it that commitment um, later in life to completely change the, the, their behavior and the way they behave and the way they think, um, complete shock. Um, I have also gotten people trying to talk me out of it. So you may get people that are saying, well, that's a terrible idea. How are you ever going to find a husband? It's like learning. It's like, why would you buy a car without driving it off the lot or like driving it around first? Like, how could you do that? Oh, you're going to be so lonely. No one's ever going to want to marry you. So, um, those are the reactions that I have received from the non-Orthodox or the people that are still in secular culture, right? Um, but I have to say, more than just telling them I'm Orthodox and I've made a vow, it has made it a little easier to let them know that hookup culture doesn't work. It's not fulfilling. And at a certain point, you have to grow up and just realize this didn't work before. It's not going to work in the future might as well actually try being chased and actually try pursuing a virtuous life, right? At, at what point is it enough? At what point has it been enough that you just want to call it quits and actually work on your virtues rather than worrying about hooking up here, talking to this person, uh, flirting with this guy? I mean, when is it over? When you just focused on Christ and your own virtues and follow God's will and just call it a day and say, all right, it's up to God. Right. So that to me has ended up it's first of all, it's true. But second of all, it, it works better talking to people that are not religious. They understand it because I think a lot of people um, that are not religious understand that the hookup culture is terrible. It doesn't work. It leaves you feeling really empty and lonely and sad and depressed. And I think people are just scared to say that because it's so common. Um, you're supposed to do that. Uh, at a, so like there's just these unspoken rules that you're just supposed to be one that hooks up if you're single. Right. So um, what I've gotten is a lot of actually good feedback when I tell that to people is like, at what point is it enough? At what point do you call it quits? They're like, yeah, you're right. So that's what I've noticed there. Um, my experience uh, has been interesting. It <laughs> it's been a big change for me because it's new behavior that has to be learned of how to act properly in the dating world. So basically we're no longer in the dating world. We're not really dating at all. Uh, we are talking to people open to marriage, but waiting for someone to present themselves, right. And ask for your hand in marriage after they get to know you, but there's really not dating per se. 
Um, I have experienced a few conversations with people that were really nice in the Orthodox world, um, really good conversations, and then ghosted completely. Um, and I couldn't figure this out of why this was happening. They seem like good guys, right? And then after thinking about it and talking to a few of my guy friends, I realized that when these men that say that they want a wife and they want a commitment, when they are presented with the actual situation that it could actually happen, they get scared and run away because it will require them to be a better man. It will require them to step up. It will require their actual commitment and actual behavior changes. And I think there's a lot of men that are very, very scared to actually make those changes. So they can, they say it a lot and they know that it's the right thing to do. But when it actually comes down to the wire of, okay, this, this could actually be something, they run away. There hasn't been any conversation. And I think, and I honestly think that's okay. Rightfully so. I think getting married is extremely scary. It's an extremely big risk. Um, you are taking on a lot when you get married. I mean, it's a massive, it's a sacrament. You are with this person until you die and beyond in the Orthodox church. So uh, I think it is scary. Um, I think we all, once we're Orthodox, understand that that is what is on the table and we say we want it. But when it actually comes to be a potential situation, people can run away. So I have experienced that. <laughs> um, I also have been um, the perpetrator in this as well, getting scared and being like, oh gosh, am I really ready for this? It's a big deal. Things that when you're in secular culture, you didn't realize how scared you were of actual commitment. Once you become orthodox, you're like, oh, this is actually what it feels like to date. You feel vulnerable. When you get rejected, it hurts because it's really you. Your heart's open a lot more. Um they can see you for who you are. You're not really putting on a facade by flirting or whatever. I mean, you're really presenting yourself as a partner. Um, so that has happened. So putting that out there, that that is possible once you become Orthodox, ghosting, people running away, experiencing some pain there. And I think it's part of the journey and it's, it, it's nothing to do with you. It's the other person not being ready, not being okay, or them being scared to say something like, hey, actually, you know, I don't think this is a good fit. They're not wanting to get their the other person's feelings hurt. So, but in general, it's much more, it's a much more respectful environment than I experienced in secular culture. So it's a better place to be, but there will still be some pain <laughs> there. Uh, what else? Yeah, there's uh there's also not flirting in the way that there used to be. Um, out in secular culture prior to orthodoxy, there was a lot of, you know, this and dressing up and, you know, <laughs> trying to kind of put on this act. Whereas when you're preparing for marriage and when you're putting yourself out there for marriage, now you're actually showing your internal qualities and virtues and presenting your full self to someone. So the flirting kind of goes away and you're presenting your childlike slash adult self to um, the potential mate, if you will. Um, what else? Oh, you will learn how to say no. Ladies, this is the best part of orthodoxy. You learn how to say no. So I've had multiple situations where guys from my past will reach out that are not orthodox um, and want to go hang out or uh, even guys in orthodoxy where there's a situation that's not really safe, not in a way, you know, it's not one that's appropriate. Um, for those of us that have had bad boundaries, um, low self-esteem, you learn very quickly that you have to have boundaries because you have made a commitment to remain chaste and you don't even want to have temptations. You don't want to be in a position where you're put in a bad position. So um, you'll learn how to say no really quickly. Um, you won't put yourself in bad situations. You will limit your physical space to one where you feel safe. You're in public. Um, you go to coffee, you know, things like that, where you, 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 you get to say no to people from your past that want to go, maybe put you in a situation that would make you vulnerable. So that's been a huge benefit. And it's so cool to see yourself grow and to see yourself become a woman that, that knows her worth and knows her value and respects 
that vow that she made. Um, so much so that you don't even want temptations and you don't want to give anyone the wrong impression. And you want to say no to people that are maybe trying to use you. Whereas before you wouldn't be able to see that they're trying to use you. So that is a great thing when it comes to being chased and based is the ability to say no to nonsense. <laughs> okay. Um, I also wanted to talk about, uh, you start to realize inappropriate conversations when language starts to be used, when you're talking to guys that is a little bit sexual or um, leading, uh, you'll find yourself a lot more uncomfortable than you used to be. Whereas maybe in the past, you used to want to be the cool girl and laugh or not make it uncomfortable and not, not hurt their feelings. Now you want to remove yourself from situations where there's any kind of language that's inappropriate or um, it's just way more knowledge, way more um, noticeable when you have made a vow of chastity that you don't even want to be around it. It's like an old drug that disgusts you now, right? You can tell immediately when someone is acting in a way that's inappropriate. Whereas before you maybe not be able, not have been able to tell. You thought maybe he's just joking. Maybe he's trying to be funny. Now you understand this is a dangerous situation. You don't want to have that conversation. You don't want to hear this language. Get yourself out of that conversation, right? So that's a huge benefit. Uh, and you're going to find that those situations happen more than you think. Um, what else? Oh, and I also wanted to talk about male friends. So in the red pill space, the manosphere space, there's a lot of talk about like, oh, well, we can't hang out with women that have lots of guy friends because they're just using them or like a girl with a lot of guy friends is a problem for this reason, that reason, whatever. Well, for us, now that we are chaste and we're in the Orthodox Church, that is absolutely incorrect. It is great to have male friends because they're your brothers in Christ. And even people that are not Orthodox, the men are your brothers and we treat them as such. So we treat them as if they are our brothers. We care about them. We love them. We can be friends with them with boundaries. Um, and we can learn from them and we listen to them. And we understand them and we keep our distance in an appropriate way. But um, it, it that's been probably another one of the best benefits from doing the Orthodox Church, becoming a chase, becoming somebody with vows. I have received so many wonderful men into my life that have been starting to heal me. So I've noticed in secular culture, prior to having those relationships, those friend relationships with, with men, you just have these toxic dating relationships where the men just hurt your feelings all the time and do terrible things and use you sexually. Now, once you've committed to your own self, your own boundaries, and obviously to Christ and doing his commandments, you now get to experience some wonderful masculine qualities from friends around you that can help you heal some misconceptions, misbeliefs you had about men before. Like all men are terrible. All men want to use you, blah, blah, blah. Once you start to have guy friends, you start to see that that belief is incorrect and men can be wonderful. Not all men. Some men are terrible, obviously, but a lot of men are great. And so you start to be able to heal and to learn which qualities are available and you can see them and you can talk to them. And these guys don't just want to use you. And you start to be to, to believe that there are good men in the world. And I think that is really a wonderful, another benefit to being chased is you get, you get some friends, some real genuine guy friends. Um, and that's where we differ from the red pill space. So, and we are their sisters. And if that's not the way that we are treated or if we're, um, we don't feel that that's the situation, then that's, that's not a relationship for us. Right. So, um, I think that's about all I have. Um, in conclusion, I think, I don't think, I know this is one of the best decisions I've ever made in my entire life. I feel like I got my soul back. Um, I feel clean. I feel healthy. I feel much, I have so much more respect for myself. I feel so much closer to God. I have a long way to go. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> but um, coming from secular culture, I had no idea how lost I was, how sad. Um, this was just what I knew. It's what everyone I knew was doing. And coming out of that does feel like being saved. And um, 
you know, even if there's not a husband that God has for you or for me, like the bottom line is being chased and following God and doing his will feels so inherently good that you'd never want to do anything else. I mean, it's just to feel yourself whole again is so healing and worth it. So that's all I have for you guys tonight. Stay chaste and based. Don't worry about what other people say. This is the way to go. See you guys later.